This is going to be part one in my series on using Python for stock analysis. And I'm going to break the series into three sections. In the first section, we will take a look at getting and curating data, some high level analysis. In part two, we will look at individual securities. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to package our code up into something that can be installed with PIP. And it'll just make it that much more usable for you in your applications. I'm going to be making the code available on GitHub and I'll leave a link for that repository in the video description. And you can see that I'm using VS Code here. Uh, you can use whatever editor you like best. And with that, we can go ahead and get started. Probably the most important aspect of doing analysis of stocks is a data source. And there's lots of data sources out there. I'm going to be using end of day historical data. And I'm using it because it's very comprehensive and it has data from around the world. They allow you to get started for free, but you're limited to a specific number number of API calls per day. If you bump into that limit, then maybe you're going to look at subscribing to a data bundle. And I've arranged for some special pricing. I'll leave a link for that in the video description as well. All right. So I think we're finally ready to then go ahead and get some coding done. All right. I'm going to start by importing what we're going to need. To get started, I'm just going to go ahead and download some metadata about securities on a specific exchange. We're going to have to pass in a couple of things. We need an API key, and then we're going to have to pass in what exchange we're interested in. I'll default it to New York Stock Exchange here, and I'll put a little documentation in. So, all right, and I will. Just give a few examples. All right, so a few on the US market. And then if you're interested in looking at some of those international markets, uh, then you can take a look at the documentation on end of day historical data's website. And you can actually download a list of all the available exchanges as one of the API endpoints. Once we're sort of set up with our documentation, next we're going to go ahead and make a call. I'm going to go out to an endpoint, which is just going to be a URL where I make this call. Okay, so that getting a little long there. So I'll go ahead and break it up into two lines for readability. Okay, and here we'll pass in the exchange we're interested in. All right, and here we'll pass in that API key. And we'll get it back in JSON. All right, so you can download in JSON or CSV form. And then we'll make a call. We'll use requests. All right, we'll get the endpoint and we'll return text. All right, once we get our text back, we're ready to transform it into a pandas data frame. Okay, and I'm going to pass in from this JSON load string the result of that call. Okay, and then, yeah, we'll just return that data frame. All right, and uh, yeah, let me print a couple of messages while this is all going on so we can see something is happening. Okay, all right, so we can test this to make sure it works and uh, i'm going to run everything through a entry point function here uh, first thing i'm going to have to do is pass in my api key all right so i've stored this in a little text file you'd have to replace this with your api key and then i'll go ahead and print the result of that get exchange data passing in the API key. I'll leave the default exchange. All right, and then I'm gonna just make sure this only runs uh, when I want it to run, right, when I'm testing. So I'll add this conditional, okay? All right, let's see if I could do all that without making any mistakes. And I could not. All right, try one more time. All right, so there is our data frame, right? So you can see what you get back. There's the headers, right? They're calling the symbol of code. All right. We get the name, all right, country, and uh, we get this type column as well. So in total, we got 
5,431 securities on New York Stock Exchange, and then they're separated into uh, some of these types, so common stock, ETF, all right, a few others, and then, all right, maybe maybe you want the entire stock exchange, so you could go ahead and download some data, store it somewhere, all right, but maybe you want to organize it by the types of securities you're dealing with, so uh, maybe we would write a helper function to filter this exchange data to just the types that we're interested in. All right, so that'll be part of the subject of the next video, and I hope to see you there.